SRAM and DRAM, those are pretty much the basic memory technologies we know now. Um, SRAM has better latency. Uh, DRAM has, is smaller in cell size, but both of these are volatile. So that's, you can only use it in um, certain situations like uh, program state or something like that. The next technology, storage technology I'm going to be talking about is flash because um, our program, nowhere really we talk about flash, so we always talk about hard drives, but we're going to be talking about flash because it's a great opportunity to talk about it. So um, before I forget, I'm going to be explaining what these word line and zip line mean. So, In any device, uh, when you want some information from it, you ha usually have a bank of what information you want. And these cells are going to be stored in some sort of bank. So I'll do a C, C, C for a cell of, of memory. And the bit line, so this is the word I want. Want. And the bit line right there, as you can see, is pretty much this right here. So they're all connected. So I will be able to choose. Oh, I'll, I'll finish this guy now. Uh, bit line, bit line, word line. Can you guys use that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So the word line indicates which word you want in the memory bank, and the bit line gives you the bit in that uh, row. So if I want this word, I turn on this word line and turn on this bit line, and I get the information of whatever state is in here into here. So that's the basic idea of what word line and bit line is. So flash. Some of the underlying physics under this is practically quantum physics, quantum magic into this. So I'm just not going to explain it in detail, but I'll tell you, tell you the basic idea. So a flash cell is pretty practically a, a transistor. So as you can see, as compared to DRAM and SRAM, where it takes like six transistors for SRAM, but for flash, it's practically a transistor. And it just has an extra layer called this floating gate, which is just a, a material that's, um, that can hold charge for a very, very long time. And what's around it are things that are not metal. So the basic idea for writing is that you use large amount of voltage to change the current characteristics of this floating gate. And it somehow does some like magic in making things be able to pass through the layer. And whatever what, uh, you want, you put it into, you put this, the information you want into this loading gate. And if you want to read, you put some intermediate voltage on the word line. And um, that creates, that lets it so when you uh, want to read from here, it can be either it allows current to flow from the, the, the source to the drain. That means that that indicates it's a one. But if there's no current that goes through there, that means it's a zero. So that's the basic idea of how flash works. And is there any questions about flash? So the pros with flash is that it's faster than disk entire density of RAM, and it's non-volatile. But the, the cons of it is that it's slower than memory, it has a limited program life because of this quantum magic, the floating gate breaks down. So, yeah, it's no good. And it needs a lot of voltage. So you need some extra hardware uh, with the flash device to hold this large amount of voltage to uh, even program the device. I, I think what I saw on Wikipedia, it takes like 
12 volts or something to change one of the uh, cells. I may be wrong, but I think that's what Wikipedia said. Um, and that's a lot, especially if you have like a 1.2 volt type of device. And, oh yeah, two interfaces to Flash is NOR and NAND Flash. And um, NOR and NAND have different characteristics. NAND Flash is especially good for file storage, because it can hold a lot, because as you can see, there's not really many of these ground wirings, because you know, wires are really expensive to take a lot of room. There's not many of those compared to in NAND Flash. Uh, but NOR Flash is really good at code execution because in NAND Flash, to get a word in one of these lines, you have to do some um, manipulation to all these other words to be able to get one word. And the propagation to get from the bit line to the ground to all these takes, is a lot longer compared to just one cell in NOR Flash. So NOR Flash is usually preferred to be used for code execution. So like in your cell phones, there's NOR Flash, or even in, your, uh, in any uh, computer system that has NOR Flash, it usually holds boot, boot code, because it, well, it does the same thing, and you don't need to uh, change that code in the boot sequence. So those are two different uh, interfaces to Flash, and these interfaces are made to also minimize the um, the program, the, the limited program life of Flash. So, finally, we're going to get talked about. Talk, we're going to be talking about NVRAM implementations. So, what is NVRAM? NVRAM is pretty much memory that's non-volatile. It's persistent after you're being, after uh, the state is persistent after you take away power from it, and it's also byte adjustable. And uh, some implementations of this is NOR flash, phase change memory, and magno magnetoresistive RAM. Or a special case of this is spin, to, uh, spin transfer torque RAM. And uh, here's a side note. Um, people from HP, uh, I forget his, I forgot their name, uh, are trying to coin these two memory technologies, phase change memory and uh, spin transfer torque memory as mem resistors, so another component of like your resistors, capacitors, and inductors. But that's just a, a theoretical thing, and the idea of mem resistors is theoretical, so it's an open question to whether these are mem resistors. So that's got kind of a side check, but it's, it's fun though. Oh, and also another side note is that Intel and Micron are really pushing. Um, are pushing the technology trends in phase change uh, memory. And for SCP RAM, Samsung and IBM are the ones that are really uh, pushing these technology trends uh, currently. So the first uh, NVRAM technology I'm going to be talking about is phase change memory. Uh, practically, this is what a cell looks like. This, uh, this gray box is a crystal. And that's the, the thing that holds the state of the information. So uh, the two states that, uh, that can be stored in this crystal is high resistance or low resistance. So you can heat up, heat up the crystal past its melting point and cool it, and it'll be a high resistance crystal. Or you can heat up the uh, glass to past crystallization point, but the low uh, melting point, and it'll be in a low resistance state. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> so if you want to read, that's how you write, just heating up this resistor and be able to control the temperature of that. And if you want to read, you practically just send some current through this bottom electrode to the top electrode and uh, find the voltage difference of that. So if you guys take in like EE101, if you see, um, So if you send some current through here, and you find, and depending on the state, this resistance will change. So if you look at the voltage difference from between between here and here, you by doing that, you know 
what state you're in. So that's the basic idea of uh, how phase change memories uh, work, and that's why it's fast, because of that simple characteristic that you learned in like EE 101 or something. So here's an interface of uh, phase change memory. Uh, pretty much it's really tall uh, heaters and the crystals. And as, you, as uh, talked about before, the word line, the word line goes out here, and this is the word bit line. So current goes through here, and if I want this word, I turn this on, and because this is on, this in this case brings current through here, and if this goes to ground. So I find the voltage difference between the ground to the bit line, and that's where I get my state of that bit. So the pros and cons with phase change memory is that you can have multi-level, uh, multiple states in that uh, crystal, and it's faster, uh, reader mics are faster in uh, phase change uh, than flash, non-volatile, and higher endurance than flash. But as you may notice that the con is that's temperature sensitive, so it's kind of hard to bring this device into a computer that heats up a lot, and it also has limited rights. So it's not really ideal for yeah. 